gather at the river where bright angel feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river the beautiful, the beautiful river gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Yes, we'll gather up the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river. This is a new day. This is a new day full of sound and light and expectation. This day has been waiting for you. This day has been waiting especially for you to embrace you, to guide you. This day has been waiting with open arms just for you. This is the day we have been given. Let's not waste it. Come now. Let us worship together. Good morning, everybody. My name is Reverend Joseph Boyd. It is my pleasure to stream this live from 1105 Elm Street in Youngstown, Ohio, one of the best cities in the entire world. Welcome, everyone, locally and across the nation, from California to New York to Colorado to maybe even beyond this country. Welcome. We welcome you into this sacred space. So many of you may have heard uh, the announcement uh, from some of our elected leaders that uh, churches are opening up, or being asked to open up. Um, I wanted to set the record straight that the Unitarian Universalist Church of Youngstown, as of now, will be completely virtual. We will remain completely virtual as of now. We have a board meeting on June 11th where we will come to an official decision and then send you all an announcement. But I've had a number of you ask me about this this week, and I want to set the record straight. Enjoy our completely virtual ministry for the health of yourself and our community, because that is what we are sticking to now for the time being. That being said, we have a number of great virtual events coming right here. So please join us after service for a newcomer circle. If you are new to this church or new to viewing this service and you've enjoyed the messages, you've enjoyed the experience, you've enjoyed hearing the fellowship 
of all the people who are present here today and you want to learn more about us, please join us Sunday after the service, after the talk back. It's only going to be 20 or 30 minutes. It'll be a time for you to meet with our membership coordinator, Karen Lapidus, who can give you a bit of the history of this church, a bit of our roots, and a bit about what we do to maintain our space and ourselves during this time and how you can become more part of us through membership. So please join us directly after the talk back, especially if you're new. If you've tuned in for three months or less, I would say pre-pandemic even. If you are with us for three months, four months, or the last couple months, please stay for a little bit after and get to know us a little bit better. Also, I'd like to bring your attention to a very important women's summer solstice circle. This is a circle for women, or and for those who identify as women. I'm going to read for you a little bit of the blurb. Coming together as women in a circle of love and support to share our wisdom is an ancient practice that assists us in stepping into our feminine power. Sisterhood uplifts, supports, and nourishes us as we take our rightful place of leadership in our world. We need sisterhood to thrive as women. Our first journey will include four weeks to explore the wisdom and power of summer solstice. We'll gather with women in our community who are curious about the ancient wisdom of aligning our lives with the cycles of nature including a virtual summer solstice ceremony. Again, this will be this coming Friday, May 29th, 2.30 to 4 o'clock p.m. And you're going to find this information on our website where you can click on the link. It's going to be uuyo.org, and there you're going to find the link. And all of you who identify as women are welcome to join this Women's Summer Solstice Circle. If you're wondering what you can do during this pandemic, we need in the community of Youngstown shopping angels. So there are many people in our community, especially senior citizens, who are having great difficulties still getting proper nutrition and getting groceries. If you're at a place where you're able to drive and deliver and pick up groceries, um, I would love to hear from you. Um, I, you can contact me directly my email uh, can be put in the chat box. It's jboyd, J-B-O-Y-D, at U-U-Y-O dot org. Please get in touch with me. And um, I can put you in touch with senior citizens and those in our community who need some groceries and, and proper nutrition. And our last announcement, are you willing to help with sound and video? We've had a real great team working here. We've had Tim Raritan, who has been our in-person sound here at 1105 Elm Street. We've had Andy Crabb, who has been the maestro behind our Zoom video. And they are willing to share their skills. So if you have video or audio skills, or if you just have a real curiosity to learn, please, again, get in touch with me through the email in the chat box. And uh, we can set you up with Tim and Andy, and you can start an apprenticeship program where you can learn how to do this. Uh, it's a wonderful experience. Um, I always learn something new every time. And again, what makes it really worthwhile is it's a team effort. We all do this together. So if that appeals to you, please, uh, please uh, get in touch uh, for sound and video. Uh, and now I would like to zoom very quickly to New York City for our chalice lighting from Tom Capacci. I look forward to hearing your words, Tom. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, a day set aside to, quote, commemorate the men and women who died while in the military service of their country, particularly those who have died in battle or as a result of wounds sustained in battle. I'm a Vietnam vet. U.S. Navy. I am very extremely, extremely fortunate to have come through my time in the service unscathed, at least physically. Certain memories will never leave me. Throughout human history, countless lives have been lost in armed conflict, and the lost lives of the innocent 
non-combatants are a far greater number. I hope we can see this day of remembrance as a strong reminder of the terrible cost of war to all people. I have this fantasy. I fantasize a world that will still have women and men in uniform doing service, kind of along the lines of the United Nations, but they will be the only so-called military in any country. Their uniforms will be sky blue in color, no camouflage, because there will be no reason to hide. They will have a symbol on the lapel of their uniform, the peace symbol. They will carry no weapons. No one will have any weapons. They will be known as servants of peace. This army's motto will be peace first, peace always. They will be devoted to helping all humanity in times of need, such as natural disasters and or pandemics. <clears throat> Armed conflict will be something people will read about in history books read with sadness and bewilderment, they will ask, did human beings really do this to solve their disagreements? Right now, this situation, this virus, is making many of us aware of how, vul of how vulnerable we all are, no matter our country, our race, our gender, our age, our politics. This awareness can be a unifying force we are a world community. Can we see this time as a threshold from which we step forward toward a world of peace, where peace first, peace always, is the motto of all nations, all peoples, where our historical heroines and heroes will be the following, those in the medical profession, the healing arts, and the artists, musicians, singers, dancers, sculptors, painters, actors, writers, poets, and also the educators. Where well, we will have an annual worldwide holiday celebrating and commemorating all who promoted and advocated for love and compassion. Can we have a world where one hungry individual is considered one too many? where women and men stand side by side as true equals, a world where clean air, clean water, respect for our animal friends, a healthy planet is also celebrated. Everyone knowing in their hearts that that's the only way it should be. That's my fantasy. I light this chalice praying that we are stepping from this threshold into this new world. And now, if you'll join me in the reading of the covenant of our church, which you can find on your screen. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Each month, we give to an organization that supports transformation in our community, which is the heart of our mission. In our church's historic commitment to the well-being of our community, we give 100% of our offering to those in need. UUYO's giveaway the plate recipient for May is Action Inc., a food insecurities task force. Action is proud to be collaborating with Cultivate Cafe during these life-altering times to provide 250 hot meals per week to the vulnerable in our community. Our well-trained cafe staff are following best practice food safety practices Precautions to provide utmost protection to the community we are serving. Gloves and face masks are being used by all personnel along with regular hand washing. 
Volunteers delivering meals are leaving the meals in a safe place at their home without actual contact. We are hopeful that your generosity will allow us to faithfully continue this service for weeks to come. We will now receive the offering that supports the life of Youngstown, the Mahoning Valley, and our wider world. Please join me in meditation. There is no greater cost than a love that is lost. In a war that is fought when freedom there is not. There is no greater sacrifice, not one that will suffice, to break your heart, yet save your soul. That is the only toll. Paving the way for their families to stay putting an end to all the killing so they may go on living. Putting up your guard makes being alone so hard. For help, it leaves no room, thus spelling out your doom. Remember their sacrifice and cast the dice.
man walked into a Unitarian Universalist church looking for a minister to marry him and his soon-to-be husband. Up on the wall of that church, there were a list of all the soldiers who died in that neighborhood from every major war since World War I. He walked up to the plaque for those who died during Vietnam. He scanned the long list of names from his neighborhood and he found his brother listed. It brought tears to his eyes to see his brother's name up on a wall of a church he had never been to. And it was at that moment he told me that he knew he had found his community. A community is a collection of more than what is present and seen. A true community honors the past and prepares a path for those who come next. It is a place to get in touch with family, with our roots, and to find a rootedness that is deeper than we originally thought. It is thought that the seed for Memorial Day came from Abraham Lincoln's speech at Gettysburg. Lincoln was invited after one of the, actually the bloodiest battle in American history on American soil, where many soldiers lost their lives. And, Getty, and Lincoln was invited to offer an address, a famous speech that we now know, that came to define the meaning of sacrifice and the true character of our nation. In that speech, Lincoln described a people conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all are created equal. He described those who had sacrificed for which no words could adequately honor. He also closed with the prescription that it is our task to take up what is left undone and thus not let others sacrifice go in vain. The speech provided a framework for justifying and centering the abolition of slavery. Many citizens were very upset about this speech. Many parents of northern so soldiers, many relatives, were so upset that he made their death, the death of their loved ones, about the abolition of slavery, a dedication to the proposition that all are created equal. To their defense, this was a different narrative than what Lincoln first offered. Up until that moment, the driving narrative of the Civil War was about preservation of the Union. Even Lincoln himself said that if he could preserve the Union without abolishing slavery, he would not abolish slavery. But he couldn't. He couldn't do it. He could not preserve the Union without abolishing slavery. Just as much as our country has been conceived in liberty, it has also been conceived by the seeds of slavery and human exploitation. For a nation like ours to endure, for a nation dedicated to the proposition that all are created equal, human exploitation and disregard for life needed, it must 
be addressed. I think Lincoln stumbled upon a truth, whether he wanted to or not, that we are still very slow to learn today. There is only one way you can preserve a union, and that is through a commitment to justice, a commitment to equality. Even if you wanted to find another way, and Lincoln tried, there is no other way. You can only have harmony. You can only have peace. If there is a steadfast, uncompromising commitment to righting the wrongs of the past. So Memorial Day has a lot of meaning for me. It has meaning because of close friends and relatives who have died in combat. It has meaning because of congregants and many people in our community who are signing up to serve in the military, usually because of economic reasons, and the inherent danger and sacrifice of that service. It has great meaning to me because since the speech at Gettysburg, our reasons and justifications for war have become increasingly fraught, disturbing, and unjust. Both at home, and you're seeing this right now, both at home and abroad in military service, our nation seems to be all too willing to sacrifice lives for economic gain. All too willing to sacrifice lives for economic gain. Gain that is only for a few. This makes the sacrifice of our family members, our close friends, our beloved community members, far more painful and sad. To cover this sadness, it is tempting to find a form of patriotism that doesn't question or challenge. But I think there is another path. It's this other path I would like to explore with you this morning. I think there is a great power in recalling the humanity of those who have died in military service. And for us to do this effectively, to the best of our ability, I think we must learn to recall our own humanity, including our deepest values and aspirations. And I think, like Lincoln discovered, there is only one way we can find peace and harmony, even in grief. And that is through works recognizing equality for all, the path of justice. There is no other way. Many of you may have heard about the recent shooting of Ahmad Arbery a 25-year-old man who was jogging in his neighborhood outside Brunswick, Georgia. It made national news. It was captured on video showing two white men pulled up in a vehicle next to unarmed Arbery who was jogging. It is disturbing to watch. One of the white men gets out of their vehicle holding a shotgun and confronts Arbery, who tries to wrestle the shotgun out of his hand and is shot and killed in the scuffle. We've heard this before. We've seen this before. The only thing that is somewhat unique about this case is that the video was posted voluntarily by the shooters. They did this 
because they believed it would look good on them and prove their innocence. It was at this moment that I realized something that I've been very slow to realize. When I watch this video, when I look at this footage, I see something disturbing and completely unjust. So do millions of other Americans. But there are also people who view this footage and they don't see injustice. They see innocence. It is this perceived innocence that has become a cancer, a disease, and it demands our attention and care. Last summer, I delivered a sermon on alternative facts that I know many of you responded to, where I, where I said that many are so desperate to seek and escape from disturbing and scary truths, an alternative to the crisis that we are in, so much so that people are willing, even maybe without consciously being aware of, cre creating false narratives, just so we don't have to feel pain or discomfort or uncertainty. We as a people feign naivety. We feign innocence so that we can avoid bearing the terrible weight of the past and of our present actions. We're in a national moment where everything is becoming increasingly politicized. We're living in a moment where we are invited on a daily basis to live into our preconceptions and go to battle with other people who have different preconceptions. Even our health as a people, as individuals, the health of our communities, the health of our loved ones, has now become a partisan issue. And this makes me very sad. Why do I bring all of this up on Memorial Day? Because I think, similar to the Civil War, we are in a time of great division, in a time when many people are yearning for a sense of peace, harmony, and homecoming. We want to feel a sense of family, a sense of being together through difficulty and good times, even if we can't agree on everything. But we can't have harmony, a preservation of our union, through the compromising of our values. This is what history has taught us. We can only preserve our union one way, and that is the path of recognizing equality for all. We have a lineage as a slave-holding nation. We have a nation that has and continues to value others' lives above others based on false categories like race. We have still, as a people, not fully digested this fact. It seems too painful to digest. But this Memorial Day, I think we can return to the roots of this holiday and commit ourselves to taking this in and allowing it to transform us. We don't do this because we're masochists and we like to feel ill feelings. We do this because there is no other way to preserve ourselves. And there is no other way to preserve our people. There is no other way to live in integrity. 
Wars have everything to do with human life. It has to do with the lives of the soldiers who enter service with faith, aspiration, and murky confusion. It has to do with the quality of life for our citizens. And in this particular country, it has everything to do with the proposition that all are created equal. It can be tempting to be cynical or naive. It can be tempting to see that the original authors of this country set us up for a proposition that is impossible to realize. It can be tempting to think also on the other side that just because we say we recognize equality of all people, this will make it so. The middle path is to see that to be an American is to live by a vow, to commit ourselves to the truth that is bigger than partisan politics, a truth that is bigger than our fear and discomfort, a truth that is about a way of life that preserves our soul and character. A lot of us are carrying a lot right now, so much. Many of us are carrying so much that it can feel overwhelming at times. Many of us are feeling afraid and frustrated for a number of really good reasons. Those who fought and died were no different than us. In a book entitled The Things They Carried by Tim, Tim O'Brien, there is a poignant description of some of what the soldiers carried during Vietnam. And I'll just read you a short excerpt. They carried all the emotional baggage of men who might die. Grief, terror, love, longing. These were intangibles, but the intangibles had their own mass and specific gravity. They had tangible weight. They carried shameful memories. They carried the common secret of cowardice, barely restrained. The instinct to run or hide and in many respects, this was the heaviest burden of all, for it could never be put down. It required perfect balance and perfect posture. They carried their reputations. They carried the soldier's greatest fear, which was the fear of blushing. Men killed and died because they were embarrassed not to. It was what had brought them to the war in the first place. Nothing positive, no dreams of glory or honor, just to avoid the blush of dishonor. They died so as not to die of embarrassment. They crawled into tunnels and walked point and advanced under fire. Each morning, despite the unknowns, they made their legs move, they endured, they kept humping. They did not submit to the obvious alternative, which was simply to close their eyes and fall. So easy, really. Go limp and tumble to the ground and let the muscles unwind and not speak and not budge until your buddies picked you up and lifted you into a chopper that would roar and dip its nose and carry you off to the world. A mere matter of falling, yet no one ever fell. It was not courage exactly. The object was not valor. Rather, they were too frightened to be cowards. For many of these soldiers who were 18, 19, 20, their day-to-day -day life, like ours perhaps, were not filled with visions of equality 
and justice, but the getting through of the day, trying to get through without disappointing ourselves or disappointing others. This can work for a while. It can last a lifetime, actually. But it's a hard load to carry. The heaviest yoke is not living by our values, but living to avoid something. There is another way. I hope we find this other way, this Memorial Day. I hope we feel a kinship with those who have died and those who are still here. I hope we are able to preserve ourselves and our union through a commitment to justice. There really is no other way. It may seem that attempting to live toward equality within such an unequal system would be a heavy weight to bear. But that is only true if we attempt to bear it ourselves. The weight is not ours to carry. It belongs to those who first conceived a liberty. It belongs to those who have come and gone in each successive generation. It belongs to those who may continue what we are starting and continuing today. Living in integrity seems like a hard weight to carry, but the alternatives are so much heavier. Avoidance is the heaviest load. Denial and pride, divorced from tenderness, is heavy. Fear is another heavy load. Living trying to avoid what you don't want to happen instead of living toward what you want to happen and what you aspire to is heavy. All being equal, may we recognize who and what we love right in front of us and dedicate ourselves to their thriving. In so doing, we will preserve ourselves and preserve our union. Please pray with me. Spirit of love, we remember those this Sunday who have died in war and in battle. We remember those who have served. And we remember all of us in this nation and beyond this nation. Spirit of love, guide us into an understanding of global community. Guide us into an understanding of patriotism that allows us to live with integrity and compassion and tenderness. Please help us to honor those who are human by being truly human. Please help us to release our heavy load and to take up the yoke that is light, which is the yoke of love. All this we pray. Amen.
We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we keep in our hearts until we meet again. As you depart, please remember the one great fact. You are loved and never truly alone. Thank you all for tuning in. We would love to have a bit of a back and forth if you have a comment or a question or anything you'd love to share. Um, it's one of the wonderful things about this platform is we can, we can talk with one another. So uh, please, if you have something to say, um, come forward. Or if you don't have anything to say but want to listen, um, do that.